Hi, and welcome to this video on transitive closures. In this video, what we're going to do is set up the concept behind this idea called the transitive closure of a relation, then give a formal definition, then look at an example that has to do with the definition. We won't be talking in this video about algorithms for computing the transitive closure. Those will be uh, coming in separate videos. So let's consider a small group of people who are on Twitter. Their names are Alice, Bob, Chuck, and Danielle. Alice follows Bob on Twitter, but not vice versa. Likewise, Bob follows Chuck, and let's say that Danielle follows Alice. But again, not vice versa. Let's assume that these relationships only go one way. So like most social networks, we can think of the follows relation as a true relation on the set of users. That is, it's a mathematical relation on a finite set. On this small set of four people, we can represent the relation like this as a directed graph, or like this as a set of tuples. Something we often see in social networks is a situation where the system takes a user and then looks at the people that the user follows, then look at the people that the second person follows, and then suggests that the original user followed them. For example, since Alice follows Bob and Bob follows Chuck, Twitter might suggest that Alice should follow Chuck. Likewise, Twitter might suggest that Danielle follow Bob since Danielle follows Alice and Alice follows Bob. A question we often ask about relations on sets is what kind of properties they have, so let's think about whether this relation is transitive. Well, the answer here is no, because we can see that Alice follows Bob and Bob follows Chuck, uh, and if the relation were transitive, then Alice should be already following Chuck, but she isn't. Likewise, Danielle should be following Bob, but she isn't. In a transitive relation, any second level relation like Danielle to Bob that exists should result in a first level connection, a direct link. If I'm Twitter's suggested followers algorithm, then what I want to do is tell Alice, hey, you should follow Chuck, and also tell Danielle, hey, you should follow Bob. If they take that advice, then these two edges are added into the social network along with the connections that were already there. But also, once Danielle follows Bob, she should also follow Chuck because Danielle now follows Bob and Bob is already following Chuck. So we should add yet another edge into the system. So what we've created here is an enhanced social network that contains all the original connections along with the ones that should be there to make the relation transitive. In the social network, it means that every connection of quote length two results in a direct connection. This enhanced relation as a set of tuples would be this, and notice that it contains the original relation as a subset, because all we did was take the original edges and add some more onto it. Let's consider a second social network with users Ron, Steve, Trish, Ursula, and Vivian in it. In this social network, Ron follows Steve, Steve follows Trish, Trish follows Ursula, and Ursula follows Vivian. And again, let's assume that these are all one-way relationships like Twitter. So which edges will we need to add into this relation in order to end up with a transitive relation in the end? First of all, notice that this is not a transitive relation, and I'll leave it to you to understand why. So I want to ask this in the form of a multiple choice question. How many edges would be needed to add into this existing relation to make the resulting enhanced relation transitive? Pause the video, look at the options below, and then unpause when you've made your choice. So the correct answer is six. Now why is that? Well, we can see that Ron should connect to Trish because Ron follows Steve and Steve follows Trish. So let's add in that edge. But now notice this creates a second level connection from Ron to Ursula that didn't used to be there. Ron now follows Trish and Trish follows Ursula. So we need to add another edge from Ron straight to Ursula. So that's two edges added so far. But now, there's an edge from Ron to Ursula, and there was already an edge from Ursula to Vivian, so I need to add yet another edge that connects Ron and Vivian. So, so far, that's three edges added in. Likewise, when you look at Steve, we need to add an edge from Steve to Ursula, because Steve follows Trish, and Trish follows Ursula. So that's four edges added so far in total. But now Steve follows Ursula, and Ursula follows Vivian, so we need to add yet another edge from Steve straight over to Vivian. That gets us up to five edges. Finally, we need to add an edge that connects Trish to Vivian, because Ursula is a link that connects those two. Trish follows Ursula, Ursula follows Vivian. And that brings us to six edges total, and if you examine this social network, there are no more connections that need to be made. 
So the enhanced relation that we've created here as a set of tuples is this. And again, notice that it contains the original one as a subset because all we did was add edges to a pre-existing network. Now what just happened here in both of these examples is that we took a node in the network and looked at all the possible nodes we can get to from that node. If we can get from one node to another in two edges, then we're going to add a direct edge. But if there's a node we can get to in three edges, then we also need to add a direct edge there because that path of three edges is now a path of two edges, which has to be directly linked and so on. So we add edges from one node to another if it is at all possible through a path of any length of edges to get from the first node to the second node. Time now to formally define the sort of operation that we're performing here. What's happening here is that we're taking a relation on a set that may or may not be transitive and we're asking which edges do I need to add to the relation in addition to the ones that are already there in order to have a new enhanced relation that is transitive. Also notice we are looking for a minimal answer. What is the smallest set of edges that I need to add that will result in a transitive relation? This new enhanced relation contains the original literally in the sense of subset inclusion. And that enhanced relation we're creating here is formally called the transitive closure of the original relation. So here's a formal definition. Given a relation R on a set A, the transitive closure of R is the smallest transitive relation that contains R as a subset. We often denote the transitive closure of R with R star. So the transitive closure of a relation has three characteristics. One, it's a transitive relation. Two, it contains R as a subset. And three, it is as small as you can possibly make it without losing either one or two, without it failing to be transitive or failing to contain R. Here's a helpful theorem that will be useful to think about how to compute a transitive closure. And it says, let R be a relation on A and let's let R star be its transitive closure. Then a pair A comma B belongs to R star if and only if there is a path of edges from A to B. And notice that in the theorem, the length of the path is not specified. It's a path of any length at all. This is what we saw in the second example, where we found the transitive closure of the Ron, Steve, and so on social network. We added an edge whenever there was a path of followers from one user to another, regardless of length. So let's look at one more example of making a transitive closure. Take a look at this relation on the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that's given by this directed graph. We're going to draw the graph of its transitive closure. So first of all, any edges that appear in the original relation also must appear in the transitive closure because if there's an edge from one node to another, then that counts as a path of length 1. So all the original edges are retained. But we're going to add several more edges onto this. Let's look at each node individually, starting with zero and then looping through the other nodes. And if there is a path of any length whatsoever from zero to another node, we're going to put a direct edge from zero to that node in the transitive closure. So starting here at zero, there is already an edge from zero to both one and two. For three, there's not an edge from zero to three, and in fact, there's not a path from zero to three either because of the direction of the arrow. So there will not be an edge from zero to three in the transitive closure. Now there's not an edge from 0 to 4, but there is a path from 0 to 4 that goes through 5. So we will need to add an edge from 0 to 4. And there's already an edge from 0 to 5. Now finally, we should also add a loop at 0 since there is a path that starts at 0 and ends at 0, namely 0 to 5 to 4 to 0. Now let's move on to 1. There's no edge from 1 to 0, but there is a path that goes from 1 to 4 to 0, so we need to add a direct edge from 1 to 0. We also need to add a loop from 1 to itself because of this path from 1 to 4 to 0 back to 1. Now there's already an edge from 1 to 2. There is neither an edge from 1 to 3 nor a path from 1 to 3, so no new edge is going to be added between 1 and 3. There's an edge from 1 to 4 already. Finally, there is a path from 1 to 5 that's of length 3 that goes 1 to 4 to 0 to 5. So a direct edge needs to be added from 1 to 5. For node 2, we're going to need to add edges from 2 to 0, 2 to 1, 2 to 2. Not from 2 to 3, though, because there is no path of any length from 2 to 3. Also 2 to 4, and then there is already an edge from 2 to 5. And I will let you, on your own, figure out why that is. 
Now here's the resulting transitive closure graph for all the nodes here without the loops for clarity. If we wanted to include the loops, you can check that there will be loops on every node except node three. Now you should go through the rest of the process here and just verify that you are getting the correct picture here for the transitive closure. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.